Uh, good morning. It seems to be I'm on the stage for too, too many things uh, today. Uh, it is really a privilege uh, for us to present this uh, keynote talk. This has been, uh, this is a paper which we submitted and I think was selected by the review committee uh, to be a plenary talk. So this is uh, something which uh, Ashutosh worked on for his, uh, his master's project. And uh, before I get into, so, so, so the, uh, we are the authors of this paper. Ashutosh is here with me. He's going to co-present uh, several details of which actually he worked on. So we just did the overview. Varun was my doctoral student. He's actually not here. He's now at uh, Cambridge for his postdoc. And uh, I was the guide. So what we're going to do is, uh, so let me just give a bit of background. Uh, at IIT Madras, the construction group has this program with construction industry, which we call the Build India Scholarship. The LNT calls it the Build India Scholarship. And uh, Ashutosh was a part of that program. So he joined us as uh, an engineer from LNT. He does a two-year master's with us. Part of the master's program is also to get to work on problems which, uh, which he brings from the site. So this is a program we've been running for 25 years now. And if I ask for a show of hands from our colleagues here, I think you'll find at least half of our students are here from LNT. And uh, either been here, you know, was here, or you know, and continue to be here with us. So this is a program that's been very successful. Uh, this is, in fact, I think out of the few papers in Isaac which we have, several uh, come from this program. Now, uh, Ashutosh actually worked on a bridge construction site before he joined the program and uh, found that there were certain issues with prefab and things like that. So the problem that came to us was from that's the from the from the site there. So we then kind of took that problem and broadened it out. And if we look at it. Today, we see there is an increased interest in precast and prefab in India. There's a huge increase. And when we talk about automation, we seem to think about, so now when you look at prefab, we've been trying to look at construction as a process, but we have not really been able to uh, do this on site. So does this work? If we, What are the process parameters that would work for construction if we took it into a factory? And I think that's been the theme of several talks in this ISAR as to why don't we make, I mean, why don't we really make construction as a manufacturing process? And this has been uh, something which has been discussed, I think on and on again, I think for the last 20 years, but here is probably at least from the Indian context, we see reality of more construction going uh, to prefab and uh, you know precast. Uh, but then we will present the case study, go through the uh, discrete event simulation model, the, uh, then present scenarios, scenarios and results and the future work. I will mostly focus on the first two parts and Ashutosh on the remaining part of the presentation. Now, <clears throat> we, we, are, we can see the transition, whether we're going to do masonry in this form or we're going to do prefab, we see a lot of transition to prefab. We have a lot of metro work going on in the country. We see all kinds of work in the metro being done in prefab. We have at least, what, 15 to 20 cities that are going to metros and all of it is down in various forms, whether it's tunnel linings, whether it's segmental construction, whether it's the whole girder, it's prefabbed and lifted, or whether it's other kinds, it's all going prefab. We have prefab road dividers, road separators. It used to be done you know, in cast institute, now it's all prefabbed, whether it's windmill uh, towers, lighting poles, prefab piles, even going to fully prefab structures. So, in India, we are facing this real transition. I think uh, on industry day, many people spoke about it. Uh, I think even in this presentation, there's been so much talked about in, in Isaac, in the, in the academic session, also there's been a lot of talk about how prefab is uh, and precast is getting uh, into, this, into, into our industry. It's always been there, but the scales are increasing. So we are now getting into looking at the the, 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 the kind of yards in which this get done. And now we are getting into processes. We have always tried to model construction as a process. I think those of us who have worked with Cyclone or even before that, we've always tried to work with construction as processes. And we have faced the challenge of actually calibrating or, or how would I say, getting the data. And by the time you 
calibrate the process, the project is over. Okay, and so we face, so we would all teach simulation or we would teach process management for construction, but talk about the uncertainties on site. And I think all of us are aware as these uncertainties get decreased when you come into a manufacturing type process. And if you're going to move uh, a lot of our construction into the factory, we now have actually have to adopt things that manufacturing engineers are using. And so with that context, and as we go further, whether we know whether we're going to do it manually or whether we're going to do it automation, might be when we talk about robotics and construction, it's going to be this form and then leading to what the automobile engineers or the, the, uh, the manufacturing engineers use. So we are probably a robotics is going to be finally in this form. You know, not just the site robots because the uncertainties are, and the large volume is going to be in this manner. So if we talk about construction as manufacturing, the question which we wanted to ask and which Ashutosh faced on site is, I have this precast yard, there's a lot happening there, okay, for this bridge construction. What is the process and what are the process metrics? How do I actually model the process metrics here? And a lot of times the site was looking at cycle time. Primarily cycle time, cycle time, cycle time. Is there any other way to model this metric? And so if we took a kind of a schematic of the yard, so you had you had, you looked at the process. The process was in the following steps. You had the reinforcement. Okay, you had the, the cutting and bending of rebars. You had actually the tying of rebars into cages. And then you had the two beds in which the segments were cast. So putting it on the plan. So you had the, the first process took place here. The second process here. And the third process in the, in the, in the casting beds. And then they were transported to the storage. So this is the process which we wanted to model. It is fairly simple at this stage. Of course, beyond this, you have a process where the segments are then actually taken to the bridge, taken to the to the uh, to the bridge, and then actually uh, put together. But to get a, a, an idea, a, a more detailed idea, I think I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We had the cutting, we had the tying, the 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 lifting, lowering, the shuttering. Lifting, the lowering, the shuttering, the concreting, the deshuttering, finishing, and segment lift. So this is the process which we wanted to model. And rather than using just cycle time, which was primarily what was used, we wanted to see if any, if how how would these other process metrics be applicable? And these are not new process metrics; they are fairly standard process metrics for a manufacturing engineer. So this is what we wanted to experiment with, and. Uh, so we just put it as an as a, we took as an objective. How do we model the process and estimate process metrics through a discrete event simulation? So if we wanted to model these, I think the default was to go with a discrete event simulation approach and evaluate through a case study. So this kind of set the base for the problem. And uh, now let me briefly cover the methodology adopted. So I'm going to just cover this. I think this is it. I'm not going to get into detail on this, but this would be what uh, basically we, there was a bit of data collection on site and then we did an analysis and Ashutosh will present some of the details. If necessary, we'll come back to the methodology. Okay, do you want to take over from here? The tools that are used, yeah. Is it audible? Yeah. So uh, I have taken the case study from a uh, Mumbai Trans Harbor Link project. And uh, basically I will talk some of, uh, I will talk about some of the key aspect of the project. Uh, it's the under construction bridge, uh, which will connect Mumbai with the name Mumbai. And it will facilitate the condition of Mumbai and also the development of name Mumbai. The construction of it's uh, began in 2018. And uh, it's about to uh, open for public in November 2023. It's a six lane bridge and the total length of the bridge is 21.8 kilometer with the project cost of 18,000 crore. The client here is MMRD and Acom Asia is the lead consultative partner. So uh, uh, luckily I've been the part of this uh, project for the two years. So I've worked on some of the superstructure work and I will talk about uh, Second thing is uh, like uh, before uh, 
moving on to the main uh, aspect i will uh, have i have collected uh, some data so the three data are important uh, in order to complete this study the first data is uh, the number of segment casted per month so uh, you can see uh, easily the, the graph is here uh, where uh, number of segment casted per month is displayed the second is uh, which is important is the average processing time uh, which is uh, useful for uh, inputting uh, in the model so uh, i have an excel, excel time uh, cycle time excel spreadsheet uh, in that i have estimated the average processing time of each stations so more than 50 number of samples are considered in this study and the third which is uh, important is that the construction works uh, we know all that the construction works goes in uh, both day shift and night shifts so it's important to know whether uh, which station is working in which shift so for example my ribara station was operating in day shift but the other two stations are operating in day and night shifts so with that i have inputted i have made the process flow diagram in the extensive model and inputted that data and got the result the output predicted by, by the model is the seven segments per month which is somewhere near to the my actual site data that is six segments per month so in this way i have validated my model now the uh, second uh, aspect is uh, the coding part so i have used equation function under value library uh, to model uh, my operational performance made major value so uh, i have at also attached the screenshot of the same here and i have attached the link in which we can uh, able to calculate this operational performance measures okay uh, now this is the important part of my study uh, after doing the coding part i have run the simulation uh, for a month and what i found that the a uh, capacity uh, of each station so you can see the result of the extensive simulation that my station one has the capacity to do the cutting uh, and bending of nine segments and even the results say the same but uh, the but the station two and is the station three they have a capacity to do the tying of 15 segment and casting of 12 segment but due to less number of cutting and bending done in at station one we are not able to do the tying of rest of the segments and not able to cast other segments as well so this affected our productivity of the process and also uh, the productivity of the process is found to be 0.45 years only and the process capacity has to depend on the capacity of the bottleneck so my bottleneck in this process is the station 1 okay uh, so uh, so process capacity is just 9 here and the flow rate of the process is is the basically the minimum between the demand and the capacity so in this study i have assumed that my demand is sufficient but uh, what happens if the like just so suppose uh, i have a, a demand of a 10 number of segments and uh, the capacity has to depend on the capacity process ca capacity has to depend on the bottleneck capacity so it's in this case i am not able to meet my demand okay uh, two scenarios i have considered in this study the uh, my main objective is to reduce the cycle time and the idle time and the second is to increase the capacity process capacity flow rate utilization and direct labor utilization so here the formula uh, with the help of this formula i have calculated the percentage improvement uh, in this scenario uh, what i have done is that i have assumed that my all stations are working uh, in both day and night shifts so earlier I, earlier in my print scenario only station 1 is working in day shift but in this case i have assumed that it is is working in both day and night shifts so what happens to the progress uh, matrix uh, like um, i able to increase my capacity at uh, station 1 and due to this uh, i have uh, extra number of uh, cut and bends available for tying work so uh, the bottleneck here is uh, shifted from uh, station 1 to station 3 and overall the productivity of the process also increased Uh, to point six one in this case, so in this uh, case I able to uh, decrease some of the idle time, which uh, which is in the form of waiting time between the station. Uh, in this scenario, I am uh, balancing capacity across all the station. So basically, uh, uh, what um, I'm asking station to work till the uh, time uh, it uh, able to uh, minimize the uh, it it is able to optimize the resource. so uh, in this case my rivaria is operational until uh, 1 am and rivaji ki station is operational till 4 am and casting bed uh, working both day and night shifts so here also i am able to get the uh, here i have removed the bottleneck in the process 
and able to get the better process capacity compared to the my base case. Okay, uh, this is the uh, just summary of the results. So you, you can easily uh, uh, check it uh, from here that uh, my all of the parameters are improved uh, right from the capacity, process capacity, flow rate in both of the scenario. Okay, uh, so this uh, usefulness of the performance. So we have a different, uh, different uh, person at sites. Uh, we have a procurement head, planning head, and construction manager in the erection in charge, precast in charge, different key members. So uh, I have just uh, uh, here, I have just wanted to say that the capacity can be useful to a planning head and team. Uh, uh, knowing the capacity, they can able to mobilize the resource. And similarly, this flow rate is useful to uh, precast head in charge in erection in charge because the uh, flow rate will uh, tell the difference between the mismatch between the uh, segmental uh, casting and the segmental erection. Similarly, the other parameters like cycle time utilization, total idle time, direct level utilization, it will uh, helpful to the precast head uh, team and in charge. So they can work on that uh, and able to uh, uh, able to improve the parameters. Okay, uh, this is also the summary of that, uh, this study. The process flow diagram help uh, me to visualize the entire process and the extensive simulation help in uh, visualizing the flow of material of the product and also the dependency of uh, stations on each other are identified. The last is the operational performance measures which help in focusing uh, on right areas of improvement and help in several decision making process like uh, whether we have to deploy additional resource uh, or not or whether we have to work overtime or not. Okay, uh, so the, uh, I will talk about some of the limitation and the future direction. In this study, I have considered only a uh, segmental production process till station three only. But in future, we can consider the segmental erection process as well. Uh, this will give a better, uh, more clear picture uh, that whether uh, uh, how how uh, how this uh, superstructure performance can uh, be monitored. And also in this study, I have uh, used extensive simulation, which uh, is just a two D visualization. Uh, but uh, in future, we can uh, go with any logic. This will uh, help in uh, visualizing the station more. And uh, this uh, process metrics are construction specific. So if I have to do the precast uh, uh, of uh, some other uh, project, we have to again map the process flow diagram. And uh, again, uh, we have to start the uh, same work. Okay. Thank you so much, Atish.